professional wrestling. Some call them athletes, others call them failed stuntmen or actors. But one thing is for certain, they do it because they have the passion and the drive to take it as far as they can just to entertain a screaming crowd of fans. Now everyone knows the larger than life characters in the WWE, such as The Rock. If you smell what The Rock is cooking. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hulk Hogan. Triple H. Time to play the game. The Undertaker. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. And John Cena. But what about our own local superstars? I decided it was time to find out more on the history of pro wrestling here in Aotearoa. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? I caught up with New Zealand great Peter Lane, who wrestled in the early 80s, has over 300 belts behind him. You were named a Kiwi legend along with Samoan Joe, Peter Maivia, Tony Guerrero, and Robert Bruce. Do you believe you paved the way for the superstars today? Yes, I do in a way. You know, those names you mentioned were all big heavyweights, and I was a middleweight. In those days, there was a definite line drawn between the middleweights and the heavyweights, and it was never the twain shall meet, so to speak. But yeah, I suppose in a way, because I did train in most of the middleweights in Australasia. By and large, yeah, I probably did have a lot to do over the last 30 or 40 years with pro wrestling. The guys that have been there for 10 years, I started off from scratch. And there's some very good guys, and they've got the knowledge now to, to teach themselves or teach up and coming wrestlers. That's sort of the transition for me. I'm sort of winding back. From wrestling through the golden age of New Zealand wrestling, what are your thoughts on seeing what pro wrestling has become today? Well, today is an awful lot different. In my days, we didn't have videos, we didn't have cell phones, computers. So wrestling nowadays is more a, an entertainment on the TV. Where is it from there till now? It's become very, very good, very marketed very well. It's just a matter, I suppose, of curtailing it all into one association and let it go from there. I think um, boxing and wrestling has more or less been a shady sort of an enterprise in, in the years goes by. Someone will always mention something you've done or, or recognise you. During its heyday, I think you were recognised when you went down the shops, when you went to the, the wrestling. You know, at the YMCA where they held all the wrestling back in the 70s and early 80s, there, there'd be two and a half thousand people. You know, for us wrestlers, we had to get there at about 6 o'clock, otherwise we couldn't get in the door. Those are the sorts of things that have changed slightly, and that was on every fortnight. Two to two and a half thousand people would be queuing up at the door to get in. For us, we had to slide around the back entrance, there was no way you were going to get through. And they were, they were also broadcasted on the radio. Quite often you'd have to book the event to get a seat, you just couldn't turn up five minutes from time and expect to get in. We had Jack Briscoe fought John De Silva for a world title belt in uh, Carlow Park. And that drew about, I think, eleven or 12,000 people. It was the biggest thing that ever happened to rest nowadays. There's so many distractions. Live sport on TV. Wasn't around when we were there. Back in the 80s, wrestling was huge. As Peter Lane described to me, he wrestled on concrete with just a thin padding. And he was hurting for weeks. The 90s saw the unfortunate death of New Zealand pro wrestling due to loss of money with On The Mat, lack of interest in the nation, low TV ratings, and wrestlers becoming too injured to fight anymore. But there was hope. The millennium brought forth new wonders, including NZWPW and KPW in Wellington, and of course IPW here in Auckland are the three main companies in New Zealand. With IPW being the main leaders in New Zealand pro wrestling, with their show Ignition on Stratos TV, and now Mana Mamao on Māori TV, I decided to focus more on IPW. As I mentioned earlier, IPW is located right here in Auckland, and trains the best in the country. Three-time IPW heavyweight champion Vinnie Dunn was able to take some time out and talk to me. There is a huge WWE fan base here in New Zealand, yet wrestling hasn't taken off as well here. Why do you think that is? Money. It's definitely a lot of money and, you know, a lot of people watch WWE for the, uh, you know, the, the big bang, you know, the whole production value, the, the light, the pyro, you know, and, and we, we don't have that in New Zealand. We don't have that show factor and it's production and that all comes down to money and maybe also population. You and Johnny King had the tag team um, and you put on the, the moko and all that. How did people react to that? 
Oh, mate, they didn't know what that was. They were pretty scared. They didn't. They, they got a great reaction. Anywhere we went, they loved us. Because we were different. And uh, we had a gimmick. Because they're just they're very captivated by it. You know, they, you come out and you're not speaking English and you're speaking broken Māori and you bang out a haka. And Americans have never seen stuff like that. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. Ohio Valley Wrestling. Um, we went there and 60 wrestlers that are really talented going for 20 spots. We were there for three weeks and they loved our gimmick. We pushed 40 other guys out of the way and they hadn't even seen us. NZPWI's top 10 New Zealand wrestlers include yourself along with six other IPW superstars. Um, is it fair to say that IPW rules Kiwi wrestling? I think everyone, everyone, every fed in New Zealand offers something different to New Zealand wrestling. I think we may be more marketable as mainstream as, you know, we're on TV now with Multi TV on Mana Mamal every week on a mainstream station. You know, KPW, they, they did well with getting on Prime with Off The Ropes. There's too many guys in New Zealand that think they're wrestlers when they're not. It's not just about your body. First thing people see when you walk out of that curtain, your gear and the way you look. Now, if you walk out there looking athletic, you know, you don't have to look like the chief or John Cena. If you just go out there, you know, looking like you've stepped into a gym, but you need to look good. IPW holds regular shows, such as their most recent one, Mana Mamau, which is on Multi TV at 10.30 on Thursday nights. If you want to know more about Kiwi Wrestling, check out nzpwi.co.nz. 7th of November 2011, John Jock Ruddock, a former New Zealand wrestling legend, passed away at his home in Pārua Bay after a lengthy battle with cancer. So in his memory, I dedicate this documentary on Kiwi wrestling to him. Rest in peace, you will be missed.